What's up you horror hounds and welcome back to the lucid nightmare i'm your host as always jay schatzer and today i have a fantastic made for tv movie and it's also a stephen king adaption guys it is toby hooper's 1979 classic salem's lot and this one is just all kinds of creepy fun let's dive right into this little gem here is salem's lot Salem's Lot is a fantastically atmospheric made-for-television movie that is based off of Stephen King's novel of the same name. Filled with genuine dread and primarily focused on the inhabitants of the sleepy country town of Salem's Lot, the film does a tremendous job in establishing its location and diligently crafting its characters in an authentic light. With its foreboding tone, iconic visuals, and hair-raising creature effects, Salem's Lot is a cinematic adaption that, though changes up a few things, never compromises the overall scope of King's original story. The film follows a young novelist named Ben Mears, who after returning home to Salem's Lot to start work on his next novel, begins to be haunted by a vivid moment in his past. Brought on by the central focus of his book, The Marston House, a real-life house from his childhood that Mears considers to be a beacon for malevolent men. Ben's fears of the house become all too real, when a series of unfortunate incidences begin to occur within the quaint country town and a mysterious man named Richard Straker seems right at the heart of it. With the townsfolk of Salem's Lot quickly turning up dead and then surprisingly coming back to life to feed on the living, it's up to Ben and a collection of surviving citizens to stop this mysterious plague of vampirism before it consumes the entire town. David Soule takes on the role of Ben Mears, the Salem's Lot native who decides to come home at exactly the wrong time. Soul is astoundingly sympathetic in the underplayed role, and his naturalistic approach to the character makes for an inspiring choice. His natural reactions to all the supernatural events that are taking place around him, as Salem Lot slowly begins to turn into a ghost town, are perfectly acted out and respectively somber and gradual. The same can be said for the rest of the cast, as even the most robust and wildly camp of characters stays grounded within their small town settings. From Bonnie Bedelia's sweet and innocent performance as Susan Norton, to Julie Cobb's flirtatious desperate housewife Bonnie Sawyer, to Jeffrey Lewis's and Alicia Cook Jr.'s spaced out portrayals as the local idiots, everyone has a specific role to play that helps flesh out the denizens of this unique little town of Salem's Lot. Lou Ayers, Ed Flanders, and Lance Kerwin especially give great performances as the last remaining few of the town that decide to stand up and battle the vampire menace in their own individual ways. Of course, amidst all of these sympathetic characters is the arch-villain of the piece, and that honor goes to James Mason as Richard K. Straker, the mysterious antique dealer who recently took up residence in the old Marston house. Mason delivers a stark performance, which is drenched in unfaltering chillness. He is calm, cool-headed, and above all deceptive to the people of Salem's Lot, and in all of his creepy glory, the guy is a frightening nightmare come to life. The creature effects and overall imagery of the quiet town of Salem's Lot is without a doubt one of the film's strong points, giving clear validity to all the supernatural things that are thrown at the audience. Restrained and respectful, the production oozes atmosphere, allowing for us to just be swept up in the moment and take it all in. With a strong sense of paranoia and genuine foreboding, Toby Hooper's adaption of Stephen King's haunting tale is a thing of morbid beauty. If you're a fan of vampire tales or just a lover of slow, mysterious horror, then give this one a chance. In the end, Salem's Lot is haunting horror with a classy bite. And there you have it, you vampire ghouls. The insanely fun and ultimate classic horror film, Salem's Lot. Just a great Toby Hooper film, a great made-for-TV movie, and just fun all around, like I said. But guys, that's it for me today. 
Hope you enjoyed that one and I hope you like what I'm doing here. If you do, please like and subscribe. And if you have time, leave a comment below because I'd love to hear from you. But until then, I will see you with the next movie review. Take care.